and now there is a lot more space. So we'll set up the camera again and hopefully this time the engine will actually come out. Welcome back to Little Miffa Classic and if you're new to my channel I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and classic car related content. In today's video I'm finally starting my big restoration project, my barn find 1966 Jaguar S-Type. So if you're new to my channel you might not know that I've had this car now for probably about two years and I've just basically been storing it and gathering parts. It's pretty much complete, I'm just missing one or two things. Now I'm going to start the uh, first part of any restoration, which is the disassembly. It's going to be a um, complete bare metal restoration going back to a complete bare shell, which means everything has to go out of it. Today, we're starting that by removing the engine. And here's the car. It's a 1966 Jaguar S type, also known as the 3.4 or the 3.8 S. This particular one is a 3.4 S. However, sometime in the 70s, when it was parked up, so it's been sitting since the 70s, someone removed the engine and gearbox and put in a 3.8 liter with no gearbox. So at the moment, there is a 3.8 liter straight six. So it's the correct engine for the car, uh, or I mean it's a little bit bigger, but it was available in this car. And hopefully this engine will be able to be restored. I don't really know that much about it, except that it ran about eight or 10 years ago and that's about it, but uh, it's going to be completely gone through and make sure that it's you know all up to spec and everything looks good and I'm probably getting new bearings and piston rings and but that will be a bit in the future. However, one of the big things on this car to go through is of course the bodywork. It's not really as bad as it looks because it doesn't seem to be structural. All the floors are good. It's just sort of you know here on both sides little bit on a few doors but I do have spare doors for this car. The rear arches a little bit but the nice thing is it's nothing around like headlights or anything up front so it is pretty straightforward panel work and you can get all these repair panels for this car so should be a pretty straightforward restoration but we're gonna go back to bare metal of course so everything needs to come off this car and starting with you know the engine, the interior, basically everything. So the goal is before it leaves this workshop to make it a just a rolling shell. So no interior, just a dash I think and you'll know, keep the headlining in and stuff but just a dash so you can steer it. No seats, um, nothing else, no carpets, no console, nothing like that. Engine out, engine bay pretty much cleared out and just leaving you know the rear suspension and front suspension in place so it can roll out of here. If you want a closer look at this car, the first couple of videos on this channel are on this car. I'll link to them up above, you can check those out, you can look at the car more in detail, but basically it's overall in pretty good shape except, you know, needing some rust and paint work. But all the chrome is there and present, it's all in really nice shape. The interior is in really, really nice shape for being a 1966. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous, but it's all going to get gone through, of course. We're not going to replace any leather, I want to keep everything as original, but I think some of the foam needs to be replaced and some of the seats, but that will be, you know, in the future we're just going to start by taking it out and storing it and really start by getting the body in good shape and then go from there. And of course all the wood's going to get gone through, all the electrics, everything. I think that when I'm done it's going to be a very, very beautiful car. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the bonnet so we get more access and I'll set up some more lights and we can see what needs to be removed around the engine. I mean the radiator is pretty obvious but if there are other things around the side it has to be removed before it should lift out. But since all the panels fit pretty well I am just going to use a permanent marker just to mark all the hinges, all the locations just so that we can get everything back together again. Even though everything's going to be stripped off paint I will try and leave those marks in place at least so I can get everything back again. Okay, that should be completely loose now. Let's hope it's not too heavy.
and instantly we have a lot more room for activities and I can actually see what I'm doing. So as you see on this side, it's pretty much almost done. The carbs have already been removed by a previous owner and I think all the linkage is gone as well. This might be some fuel line I might have to disconnect. The heater hose is back here, which talk about hard hoses. Top hose as well. The radiator is going to go and a few electrical connections for temperature gauge. The choke, a few other things over there. Nothing really special down there. I did find a cool thing though. So this is a block heater. So the car was, you know, used in winter. Probably why it's so rusted after not being on the road for many years. So that's really kind of cool. Not going to put it back in, but cool thing to have at least. You might notice that the whole engine is, you know, tilted backwards. It's because there's no gearbox and no gearbox mount. It's only held in place by the engine mounts. And they're all the way up here on the early XK. On the later ones, like on my XJ6, they're up here instead using those bolts. So it's held in place just by that. And then the back of it is sort of resting against the bulkhead. So when I get it out, I think we're going to lift out the back of it first to get it level. And then start going straight up. Hopefully kind of get it a bit more forward with the radiator out. So we can clear all this stuff here and leave that in place and leave the heater box in place. But I think I'm going to just remove the radiator now, get rid of the hose, and then I think it's just a bolt there, the bolt on the other side, and possibly something beneath, and that should slip out, and then we're going to see what I'm going to do with the power steering pump over here. Because this has a really weird power steering system, which I'll show you when we have the radiator out, but basically it's driven off the back of the generator, and I think I'm going to remove that before taking the engine out. But we'll get the radiator out and then we'll see what needs to be removed. So I've removed a few things like the top hose and I cut the bottom hose. I also removed the fan just to get some extra space. And here's something I haven't seen before. These are weights on here. So put them on right where they've been. So I think that's to balance the fan or something. I'm not really sure but that's interesting at least. And doesn't look pretty, but for now I'm just doing this, just taping all the bolts onto what I took off, so I know where it goes back on. Seems like the radiator is held in place with uh, these bolts up here, one on each side, and then there were two nuts on the bottom. So it should be loose now, so... And one pretty heavy radiator out. So of course, just like everything else, the radiator is going to get sent off later. We have a new core put in it, a much more modern core, so... This car will stay nice and cool. And in case you're wondering, well, why is he taking the engine apart? Why doesn't he just try and start it up? Well, two reasons. One of them is the snap spark plug. And the other one is this. I didn't know about this before, but I could just guess. Have a look at all that crud coming out. Just not really sure what it is. If it's rust mixed with uh, old coolant or whatever. That's probably just all in the engine as well. So, um... Definitely want to flush all of it out, take it apart, see if the block can be saved. Hopefully it's not a lot of internal corrosion, but if there is, we'll go from there. But that is definitely why that engine needs to come out and be taken apart before you even attempt to start it up. Now with that radiator and fan removed, there shouldn't be that much left to do before I can lift this engine out. I've disconnected those electrical connections we talked about over there. I've also removed the cables here for the uh, TAC generator. That's a really cool device. It hooks up to the back of the camshafts. And that's what generates the signal for the TAC in the car. Then you have the heater hoses over there. I'm just going to cut those. Two of those. And over here is that really weird generator slash power steering pump I was talking about. So here is the generator. And from the back of it, you have the power steering pump driven off the back of the generator. This was an optional extra on these cars, and it really does seem like an extra. It seems like such an afterthought. Um, I'm going to, of course, try and keep this, because I think this is really, really cool. I've heard that they're really sort of weird to rebuild, and well, that they always leak, and lots of people sometimes try and change them out for a more modern system. But if I can get a rebuild kit and I can rebuild it, I want to keep it, because I think it's, it's really cool when you show up to a car show and, like, open the hood and show this really really odd power steering setup. I think that's kind of cool. But now I'm just going to disconnect these two hoses here which go to it. I think this is the low side. I think that's the high side. Disconnect these electrical connections. Keep this on the block and try and lift it out with the engine. 
The last thing I need to have a look at is there isn't really an exhaust on this car. You have the manifolds here, and then there is a bit of the downpipe left that goes down under there a bit. But I'm gonna see if I can leave that on the engine and just sort of tilt it and get it out with the engine because these look extremely rusty here, and I think I'll have a Oh, like a really hard time getting those out down here when it's so tight. So I'm gonna try and leave that on But I will do these things now then we'll hook up the crane and let's see if we can get this engine out So I ended up changing my mind and I took this generator slash power steering pump out so now you can see it more clearly and Let me tell you it is as heavy as it looks. It's extremely heavy uh, The reason I took it out was because right below it here is the bolt for that side motor mount and I just couldn't get to it in an easy way so this was pretty easy to get out and I thought it would be kind of rusted on there because all the bolts look really rusty but thank god for oil leaks the engine leaks oil and this leaks oil so everything came off really really easily and now I have my new tool set up I got a new engine hoist and I have this level here which I hope will work well I am working with a pretty low ceiling, like you know, so the plan is to get the high part in between here and then if I need to move the, the engine, I will probably just leave that in place and I'll roll the vehicle back because I moved it a bit forward so I do have space to move it back and forward so I think that should work well. And I've loosened up everything now I think so we're ready to lift it off clearly see the motor mount there it's just one bolt on each side one here and one on the other side and now everything should be loose so I'll set up the camera we'll start lifting it up and I'm not really sure if I need to angle it or not it will be really fun to see but hopefully I can get this out even with the low ceilings otherwise I'm gonna have to get really creative okay let's start the lift okay I see movement the cylinder head is no longer on the rear bulkhead and still on the front motor mount. And now I think it's loose on both of the front motor mounts. Okay, it's loose on this one at least, so it's leaning a little towards that side to so see if I can move it over and lift it up a bit more. I think I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more of an angle on it and possibly push the car back a bit. Okay, I'm going to have to take a break right there because those downpipes I didn't really want to remove. They're just jamming up against the bulkhead if I lift any higher. So I'm going to let it down a little bit, see if I can get those off. If not, I'm just going to cut them right off. And then I'll put the camera back on and we'll continue lifting it up. So quite a long time later and the exhaust manifolds are out. These are the bolts I just could not get to budge at all. So um, I decided to try all the nuts up at the exhaust manifolds. And they all came off pretty easily. So I just removed all of it as a unit. And now there is a lot more space. So we'll set up the camera again and hopefully this time the engine will actually come out. Alright, now it's coming out no problem at all in the back, so I think I'm going to try and re-angle it again. So. Pretty close up here with the water pump. So let's see if I can move the engine just back a little bit. There we go. So far, I think I can continue just bringing it up level. And seem to have plenty of space left before I touch the ceiling, so it should be no problem. Now I should clear. Let's see if I can pull this back. 
I've gone back as far as I can with the engine hoist. I'm uh, pretty much against the ceiling and I'm up against the beam here. But I'm pretty much clear of the car. I mean, there's space under there. A little off the handbrake, so I'm going to push the car back as far as I can. Hopefully that should let me clear at least the front bumper and everything. And there we go. Now that should clear and I can let it down a little bit and hopefully pull it back a little bit more as well. Now that's a milestone, and the first milestone of this massive restoration, that old XK engine is out of the engine bay, probably for the first time since the late 60s or early 70s, when that replacement engine was put in here. Here's just a quick look at that odd power steering unit. So there's the sort of power steering rack part of it. Looks, looks kind of funny at least. I think I'll get to know that a lot more in the future, trying to get that thing working. The one thing I found really interesting is here's a normal, you know, universal joint. Sort of, you see those all over on these cars, on the steering racks, on the rear suspension, you know, the prop shaft. However, I haven't seen a CV joint, one of those more modern looking ones, on a vehicle as old as this. I mean, this is a 1966 car, and it's, you know, an early 60s design. A lot of stuff in here, so. I don't know, I haven't really seen that before in such an old vehicle, so I thought that was kind of cool. And one last thing before I call it a night, I mean it's past midnight here, I'm quite tired, but if you have a look there, I can confirm that yes, it is a 3.8 liter engine. So I'm going to call it a night, it's very late, and tomorrow we'll have a look inside the engine a little bit. We'll take off a cam cover or two, see what that looks like, and possibly have a look inside the oil filter or something to see if we can know anything about the condition of this engine, that will be tomorrow. So it's the next day and as promised, we're gonna have a little bit of a look inside this engine. I've loosened up this cam cover here, so we'll look under there in a little bit. I haven't looked myself. Just loosen everything up and we'll tap that a bit and lift it up to see how clean it looks inside there. I know I said we'll have a look inside the oil filter, but I checked, as you might notice, there's no dipstick, but I checked with just a rod down there there is still oil in the engine, it seems to be at pretty much the correct level. I'm going to leave that in there until I disassemble the engine. I think it's good that there is some oil in there. Help with any corrosion or anything, I think that's a good thing. So I'm not going to drain that out and have a look at the oil filter now. But we'll do that in a future video when we take this whole engine apart. One thing I did notice is the water pump here seems to be kind of seized or... So, I don't know if I'm just turning the pulley itself or water pump but it's very very stiff so there was a lot of crud that came out from the bottom of here so maybe um, maybe the water pump is where all that corrosion is coming from this looks like it's I don't know I'm not sure if that's aluminum because it looks like it's cast iron or something on these engines I'm not really quite sure we'll have a look at that of course in that future video when we take everything apart one thing I did notice which is quite nice if you Look inside here, I'll bring the camera up in a bit. But there's definitely pretty much no corrosion in here at all. There's still a nice lip in there. I mean, these can be gone when you remove the hose on an aluminum engine that's this old. At least the top half is aluminum. This housing is at least. And that's still there and it looks pretty much brand new. I mean, I've taken hoses off cars from the 90s, which where these are completely gone. So, but this is still there from the 60s. That's pretty impressive. So I'm going to try and get this uh, cam cover off now. I just gave it a little bit of a whack with the mallet before. And that 
is surprisingly clean. I'll come up with the camera and show you guys a bit closer. First, just have a look inside that cover. I mean, there's no sludge or any buildup or anything, and this was run last, you know, sometime in the 60s or 70s on really old oil back then, which did not have detergents like we have today. So this thing seems like it was taken care of really well because if it didn't have frequent oil changes, there'd be a lot of sludge stuff back here. That's very, very clean, and I haven't cleaned this down at all. I mean, there's hardly any oil film left in there just because it was so long ago it ran. You can see where the timing chain has been going here. So that's really good news. Let's have a look in here. And I don't see any corrosion or anything. I mean, I was expecting maybe some small corrosion on this because it's just been exposed for so long, but I guess, you know, there's still a little bit of oil up in here. And I guess all this is covered with oil, still a small oil film that's caused it not to corrode. Chain is still there. Still tight and everything, so that's really, really good news. I'm not going to take any more apart right now, but this is just a good indication that I think that it is correct that this was a good running, pretty low mileage engine. But the big issue with it was it snap spark plug. You can see one snapped off clean over there and one snapped off and the electrode pulled out. So that's the reason I haven't really tried to start it anyways because I have tried to get that one out with a tool and it just doesn't want to budge. I think it's going to have to be drilled out or maybe taken out from the other side. And that's not something I want to do with the engine together. That's also why I haven't tried to see if the engine is seized or not because I think at least when that plug uh, snapped off, I think that parts of it probably fell down into the cylinder. And I don't want anything scratching up the board and destroying the block. So that's why I don't know if this thing is seized or not. But when we have the head off and we remove the timing chain, we'll see if everything rotates. And hopefully it does. And hopefully it does look really nice inside. But that will be in a future video. Let's just look at exhaust ports. And yeah, the last time it ran, it was running in all cylinders. It looks like it was, you know, a little bit rich, but running the same amount of richness on all the cylinders. Honestly, that looked a lot better inside than I thought. Actually, I think it looks even nicer than the XJ6 engine looked when I took it apart. I think there was more sludge and buildup in that engine when I took it apart the first time than when I opened up this one now. There was not a single mark or scratch on the cam lobes. The buckets look very nice. I mean, there's still oil up there after all that time. I think this engine is hopefully in really good shape and that it can be rebuilt. Hopefully it's not seized or anything. That's the one thing that's worried me. But if it was seized, I think I'd see more moisture, you know, up there on the camshaft. So hopefully it's very nice inside, but we'll see that in a future video. Speaking of future videos on this car, this is a very, very long-term project for me. I don't really have a deadline for it being done. I'm going to work on it when I feel like it. And there's always other cars on the channel which, you know, are basically on the road and driven and they will be prioritized, you know, to keep them on the road. So this is a long-term project, but I promise you as soon as I do anything to it, if you guys want me to, I will update you. And if you want, let me know that in the comments down below if you want to follow the restoration of this car on the channel, even though it's not going to be... A video on it every week it's probably gonna be a video on it you know once a month or something seeing what's happened and you know some updates on it. So please let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see here on the channel anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe it really does help out a lot and you get to see all these future videos so hit that bell notification and you won't miss any future updates so until next time I'm Adam and this was Luma for classic I'll see you soon